Hi, my name is Kenny Perez, and I will be talking to you about grief therapy and dreams. Dreams can be a big part of the grieving process. It often reflects the particular task of mourning with which the grieving person is struggling. As counselors, one way to identify what they are struggling with is by linking the dreams to these tasks. For example, those that dream that their dead loved one is alive, they are having trouble processing the first mourning task, the need to come into a realization that the loss is real and that the dead will never come back. Some dreams can also redefine the relationship with the deceased. According to some research, dreams can also help integrate troubling effects. This is part of task two, allowing feelings to be processed. Unfortunately, when someone grieves, they grieve differently. Some may have feelings of guilt, anger, and anxiety, but at times these feelings become so intense that they can impair the functioning of the bereaved person. Dreams can give you an explanation of why you are feeling guilty, ashamed, or mad. In task three, it's important to adjust to a world without the deceased. Some do struggle because the disease left them with many problems to be solved. Some have dreams that the disease is giving them advice on ways to deal with a particular problem. So dreams help in task three because they are helping the bereaved to make sense of that loss. Now in task four um, is to move on without the disease but many struggle in that task as well. Some have problems starting a new relationship with another. Others cannot let go, let go of their child's death. So therefore, therefore, they do struggle to have a relationship with uh, their other children that are alive. So as I mentioned before, mourning is different for everyone and it's process um, that at times individuals that are grieving become stuck in, in that process. Fortunately, dreams can be useful too, not only to show where one is stuck, but also to identify what might be causing the struggle to complete a task. Some individuals have uncertainties and they want to know if their loved one is all right, if they're okay, but dreams can help them resolve those uncertainties. Here, um, I find a couple of perspectives that I gained from the relations of dreams in mourning process. Dreams can be a huge part in therapy to help process that grief. And although many can interpret dreams their own way, the best interpretation will come from the actual person in bereaf bereavement. It's not the counselor's responsibility to decipher the dream alone. It's a matter of allowing the client's own judgment. Both the counselor and the client can look for underlying themes and they themselves will uncover hidden messages that will eventually help them see what's troubling them. The goal is to help them achieve the process of each uh, task. In the video that I saw, Dr. Jobert, uh, Complicated Grief, she shared her story of grief after the loss of her child. She explains the feeling of being overwhelmed and that it was an insufficient grief. She was making more effort through the morning tasks, therefore a complicated grief. A lot of people use a lot of their energy to grief. Dr. Jubert expressed that she had to learn to open up and share her story as well to receive support from other people. So dreams can be very useful. In the case of Dr. Gilbert, um, those that have trouble opening up and sharing their stories um, because of the death of, of their loved one, dreams can be very, very helpful. According to Warden, grief therapy helps those with conflicts of separation and to assist with adapting to the death. Patients experience thoughts and feeling that her or she has been avoiding. So I would think that emotions 
don't know time. They just wait. Grief just waits. The harder you wait, the longer it takes to work through it, according to the video um, that we watched. So I was reading through an article, uh, Kosminsk, and he mentions that working with emotion is dedicated to techniques for processing emotions. A case could certainly be made that all of grief therapy involves working with emotions. He later stated that bereavement, like maturation from childhood to adulthood, involves a discernible set of challenges. What now Erickson will call it developmental crisis. So in another article, uh, Black and Colleagues, he mentioned that most research has focused on the themes and dreams of the deceased. In studies um, that specifically investigated bereaved individuals, the frequency of dreaming of the deceased being alive or dead in the dream ranged from 53% to 75%. So in this article, Black and Colleagues study, they examine two dispositional predictors of dream recall, openness to experience and attachment style. Openness to experience is a responsibility factor that relates to having a greater aesthetic appreciation, inquisitiveness, creativity, and unconventionality. So it has been shown in multiple studies to be associated with greater dream recall frequency and that attachment style to be related to dream recall. Attachment styles may indirectly relate to dreaming of the disease because of the relation to grief intensity as found in several studies. In a scenario where a 38 year old single woman, and we're gonna be talking about this case um, what will we do as counselors? Um, well, this woman who's 38 years old, she's single. She comes to counseling because she's been experiencing sleep difficulties over the past three months since her stepfather died suddenly of, of a heart attack. Now, the client has already shared her story in relationship with her stepfather. She was... Um, she expressed that she was glad to hear of his death and that he finally and that he's finally out of her life because unfortunately she was physically and sexually abused to her until she left home at age 17. This is what I would do as a counselor. I would allow the client to talk me through her dream. She's having um, trouble with task two she's having trouble processing those feelings so it's important for her um, to express feelings of anger perhaps resentment and she perhaps has not fully processed her grieving so one technique that I would try is the empty chair that way she can talk to her stepfather as if he was alive so that she can work on her unfinished business and that way she can express her thoughts and emotions at the same time she will be finding meaning to her dream of her stepfather's arms outstretching to her so this will help her with task two in which she can explore those emotions and find a sense of peace in herself and the dead and can finally decrease the effect of not sleeping well or performing well at work so she will finally understand oh, what is really holding her. Why is she stuck? Why is she stuck in the process of grief? What is the task that she hasn't been able to process? And I would also treat her in other sessions uh, or refer her to a specialist to be treated for perhaps she has PTSD to her to due to her past uh, trauma or sexual abuse from her stepfather. And I want to end um, this video, short video, 
giving you some pointers um, that dreams can help in counseling. So first, the disease does not need to appear in the dream in order for the dream to be relevant to the mourning process. So he or she does not have to be in the dream. Number two, don't overlook dream fragments because these might be very useful. Number three, let the dreamer tell you the meaning of the dream. And this is why for me, it's a highlight. And this is what I've learned um, from this. A lot of people don't know that they themselves can find an answer to what's holding them. Why are they mad? Why are they upset? Why are they angry? Why do they have all these hidden feelings? Um, it's important that in number three, this, you know, um, dream, the person can explain and express it herself. She would be, or he would be a better person to define the meaning of that dream. Also, another point that I wanna suggest is, and number four would be when a client has series of dreams. When the client has series of dreams, look for underlying themes that may tie all the dreams together. So there might be an, uh, a theme there that connects all of the dreams. And finally, number five, some dreams may occur at the time near the anniversary, anniversary of the death. Um, so this encouraged clients to pay attention to these dreams and to use them as a way of understanding where they are in the grief process. And this is all for today. I hope this, this short video is very helpful.